What's up guys, Ben here, bringing you another video today. It is a Monday after the second week of qualifiers for Major Ford. There are a lot of really interesting results this week. A couple of uh, upsets in the bottom eight race for champs is really shaping up to be a absolute heater going down the wire at major four i think we got a lot of interesting things to talk about in this field so a lot of shuffle especially in the middle so let's dive in and see how all the teams rank going into the third week of qualifiers which by the way i'll be in atlanta for so let's take a look all right so if you are new here uh i don't do the letter thing this is how we do the tier list uh at the top you see the champs i think that one's pretty self-explanatory the top three teams in the league they've all won events this year they are clear kind of in that top tier uh together and i think it always comes down to who plays better on the weekend i don't know who's gonna win the event right now so any regulars to finish top four spoilers it's new york like i don't i don't tell you we'll get to interesting week four new york in a sec making progress will be your fifth six best teams we've got an interesting maybe add to this tier this week so we'll take a look at that and then here is where i think things get really spicy work to do going to dallas is really going to be the teams that i think are you know, kind of seventh or eighth really going to get those last two champ spots and then probably like ninth uh so probably like three or four teams in the spot teams that are in the mix to qualify for champs cancun soon are the teams that i don't think have a great chance uh to qualify for champs they're still in it they're not eliminated but they're gonna be on vacation uh or pulling up as a fan to uh champs this year and then cancun and well those are teams or team that is already uh, got their suitcases packed uh, for after major four all right so let's talk uh boston breach sitting at the bottom i mean i don't want to spend too much time on it they suck they suck uh they got slammed by seattle this week it was a 3-0 there's not really much to remark there they're they're pretty much going to set the losing record because they play phase next and they play lag which is potentially winnable but if they don't win that then they got optic so it, it's really just misery for boston i think the more interesting things will be seeing what signs uh, come out of any sort of announcements or comments they make after major four but their season is basically over although obviously they can pull up to major four and make a loser bracket run but i gonna be honest to you i don't know if they're gonna make winners bracket for this one i mean they gotta win three next two and they got optic phase carolina lag yeah. all right next up we have um sort of uh the cancun soon tier and i'm gonna start with lag uh, on this one and i'm gonna move them to the back of the line here because right now in the standings they are sitting sort of rock bottom in that aspect they had uh two matches this week and lost both of them uh three oh first off was off to uh miami i mean both series basically went in very similar directions first map was pretty close on sub base in the case of the miami match it was a karachi snd was pretty lit that, that miami did clutch up in the last round even though they started to kind of throw the map a little and then a control high rise they went down to the wire as opposed to the phase series which first map was even closer the miami one on sub base but the next two maps were definitely um not close and for lag they really needed to win one of these series because they're in a position right now where they are one in three um and they have boston vegas and seattle coming up so they have some opportunities to try and steal some points off of people but i mean this team is netted kind of in the same spot that we've uh thought they've been especially last but like they're not a good control team you know they don't really have a great hard point map pool and they're not really able to win snds when they were exceeding during stage two they were able to clutch searches they stopped you know winning searches so i just don't want to believe in a team that's 6 and 19 online yeah they got some opportunity to make some interesting wins the next few weeks to try and get 10 points out of the standings but i think at this point it's starting to become too much and they're going to have to essentially get top six and hope everybody else on the bubble loses in the first round of the loser bracket so i have them right now bottom uh, of the sort of six teams vying for essentially uh two all right, uh, I think next up, I'm going to put Carolina. I'm trying to like order this. The, the thing is like, I don't know how to order this. I'm gonna try to order this by I think percentage. I think a team's gonna basically make champs amongst this bottom six. So I think I have to put Carolina behind uh, Minnesota. Carolina had that really bad series against LAG last week and then the New York series, they fumbled it into five. And then this week, again, both their series went to five, but they were able to win one. The one against FaZe was interesting. I thought they looked Really good on those first two maps. They uh, grind out that sub base. Good comeback victory there against FaZe. Then the uh, round 11, really good quality invasion SD with both teams. But from there, they just kind of wilted. They got slammed on the invasion uh, control. Six star wasn't that close. Um, and then last map, Rio, FaZe just kind of looked too dominant. And then the Thieves series was interesting. It was kind of the inverse of the three series before, right? LAG, New York, FaZe, Carolina were up 2 1 in all of those series and just couldn't close map four and map five. In the Thieves series, Carolina won first map fairly conventionally, been fairly convincingly on Karachi. Thieves then took the next two and looked really good on the control. And I was a bit worried 
the Carolina was going to like 3-1 crumble, but they looked amazing on a hard point Rio and they carried that momentum to a round 11 win on Invasion S&D. So finally kind of converting five and I guess the way they got to do it is be down 2-1 in the series. I just think the way that Carolina is playing right now though is like very unsustainable in the in a sense of trying to get like consistent um, results. And I'm a little worried about uh, the real search for them right now because while it looked really good during stage three, They've now played it four times this stage and only won once. So we're going to need to see them kind of figure out a little bit of how they want to play that map. If it's going to end up in every series this split. Now, Carolina have Optic, Miami, and Boston coming up. And they've already got one win. So if they convert against Miami and Boston, they will be in winner's bracket. And realistically, though, anyone makes winner's bracket, they're not going to upset an Optic phase or Toronto if they're one of the bottom three seeds. You'd have to really get fifth and hope that maybe you can upset New York and we'll get to them later but Carolina's got to try and upset Optic and win the next two and try and get on you know the uh 160 mark kind of situation which would put them one victory away from qualifying for champs otherwise they're going to probably have to get top six depending on kind of how Miami do and Thieves do and Minnesota do who are ahead of them right now in the standings and the problem other problem for Carolina as we start to get close to the event I want to keep kind of talking about this is tiebreakers because teams are tied on points and standings it's going to go down to head-to-head -to -head. now carolina does have the tiebreaker on vegas um but they are tied right now on minnesota they don't have the tiebreaker um on miami or seattle they do have them on lag but they don't on thieves so the dynamic there is going to get very interesting and and put teams in a position where they might need to make a deep run as carolina team might be one all right so next up we have the minnesota rocker and just like carolina they kind of tread the water this week but not in the way that you might expect but they had two matches uh miami was an interesting one First map was pretty interesting. Minnesota then kind of clutched up an S and D Karachi, which, okay, we've expected that. Then coming after that map, I'm like, this is going to be a classic three, one that Minnesota's going to lose and win no respawns. And that's basically what happened, including them just breaking down on a hard point Vista. And after that series, I'm like, these guys are cooked, bro. They are absolutely cooked. They should make a roster change. And then I think they grinded out a very interesting victory against optic. Uh, you know, they, same kind of situation as Miami, right? Lost first map, won around 11 second map, lost the control. I thought, GG's, it's over. And they absolutely slammed Optic on Vista Hardpoint, like bad, like one by 100 points. And then took around 11 on Karachi. That was pretty lit. And on the back of, I think, Lin's finally breaking through and really having a quality series to help get these guys a victory against a very good team. So I think for Minnesota, this is potentially a result to be on their or build on their two and two to split, which is not too bad. The problem is that they have New York, Toronto, and Vegas coming up. So I just don't see them winning two at three there. And it's going to come down to that Vegas match to try and make winners. Some interesting stuff ahead for Rocker to try and get on the Miami Thieves Vegas here because I really wouldn't put them in that spot right now. Like they can't win control at all. They haven't won a single one um, this split. The search has been good. Again, that's the thing, the common theme with this team since the change, the S&D has been good, the respawn not so much. They have started to win some hard points. And I think teams might maybe look to get rid of Vista against them based on the way they've been playing on that. So let's see if teams adapt going forward. But I think if you're a Rocker fan, the next two weeks really make or break the season here on them trying to get some momentum in a major four because I just don't, I don't know. It's gonna be tough for them to win, basically win one respawn and two searches in a series as your path to victory. I just don't. I still see that as a very good way to try and make champs. All right, next up we have the Vegas Legion. And I don't know how to rank these three teams is sort of the issue here. I think for now, I'm just going to put Vegas in front of Miami and Thieves. I mean, this might just change sort of week uh, to week. But I thought for Vegas, I mean, this is probably one of the best weeks online that this franchise has probably ever had. To be straight up with you. And it's online COD, so I don't want to lose too much composure about it. But they beat uh, Optic in a game five. Um, really just kind of traded maps throughout the series and Vegas took a hard point sub base, which they absolutely slammed optic on. We, we criticized the pick when we saw the vetoes for that series, but Vegas destroyed them. They took a control high rise. Okay. Gritty optic, you know, solid at that map. And then a, a game five Karachi S and D again, we'll get to the optic Karachi things for the end of the video, but uh, a really solid victory for uh, Vegas in which they closed out a very convincing map five. And then they absolutely slammed work like. I know uh, Dante went on Twitter after this series, blame Virginia server, whatever, but that's not the reason why they lost. In New York threw a lead on the hard point. They got slammed in the control. Back and forth, Karachi SD that Vegas took. This Vegas team, listen, if they play this way consistently, which is back to what we saw during like stage two, they're going to be like a hard out for some of these teams that are uh, not disciplined. I think during this split right now, I really like what I've seen from Vegas on high rise control. I really like what I've seen them from them 
in Karachi S and D. And they've got some decent bread and butters to build on. So I kind of like their momentum right now. Two big wins against top four teams. And they got Seattle LG Thieves and Rocker to finish up the split. I can see them definitely getting one victory from the four. So Vegas will make winner's bracket and they are potentially in a position where they may get a top ish seed for a major four, which could be really big for champs qualification. Keep in mind for Vegas is good. They're playing right now. They're still in the ninth spot in the standings, but they are only 30 back of Seattle, only 20 back of Miami at six and then 15 back of Thieves in seventh. So like, you know, you win three or four matches online and you're on that 160 ish mark. You're probably feeling pretty good about like going into the event in the sixth spot and potentially being able to sort of uh, clutch up. Obviously, they want to try and climb in the fifth for obvious reasons. You don't want to play Phase Optic or New York. No, sorry, Phase Optic or Toronto. You want to round one of champs. But uh, for Vegas, is keep going week to week, match to match here. They have a good opportunity, unlike I think Thieves, and we'll get to in a second, where they can have a very good online split here and really make their work at the event a lot easier to qualify for champs. All right, I don't know how to rank Thieves in Miami right now. We'll start with Thieves. I think they're just sort of all kind of in the same boat. These only had one match this week and they lost the game five to um, Carolina. And th this is sort of my issue with Thieves. Like they're just not a team that's really 3-0 or 3 one people. Everyone in these series, I feel like goes to game five. They played 11 um, this year and they've won eight of them. And so I just want to see this team kind of round into a, a solid form. They've been really, really good at s and um, during the stage, but a lot is off the back of Rio Surge, which should be trying to get banned uh, against this team uh, going forward. Unfortunately, they are also very good at high-rise SD, so it's kind of a pick-your-poison situation on that. Um, but the respawns have been kind of 50-50, and for the Steve's teams, it's less about the stats on that. It's more that they just continuously just, like, lost, you know, important game fours uh, throughout uh, the season. They're 6 uh, and 18 on game fours, um, and they just don't have really the ability to close out. And the control was fairly iffy last stage, being 3-7. and seven. They have improved to 2-1, and one. So far in the games that they have played, but we got to see how it kind of nets out going forward. The problem for these, and we talked about it in almost every tier list video I've done the stage, is that they the back end of this schedule is very difficult. They are two and one right now, but they have Toronto, Phase, Vegas, and New York. So realistically, to make winners bracket, these has to find one more victory. I would have hoped that Carolina was that one, but now basically they probably got to be Vegas to make winners bracket. Otherwise, Steve's might be in a very difficult position here if they lose the next four, where they may actually end up in a position where they need to win one, maybe two losers bracket matches in order to qualify for champs. And it'd be a real disappointment if the Steve's organization uh, does not uh, make champs. Maybe Nate Shot's going to yell at me on stream again about it. I don't know. Uh, the point is that they are a lot of work to do here, and it's not quite certain yet they're going to make it based on what I've seen in recent weeks. It's a big... Big Herculean task to try and get some online points here. They just need one upset. Let's see if they can do it. Now the flip side for Miami, um, who are two and two right now. Again, similar spot as Thieves. They have Carolina, Seattle, and Face. So unlike Thieves, I think Miami has an opportunity to get one or two there and really get a winner's bracket and make their journey a little bit easier. And they're already sitting on 150 points. So they win like two matches. I think 170 should be enough to get them in the champs. Now, Miami had a weird week. They played three matches this week. I don't know how that happened in the schedule. They 3 1 Minnesota Rocker. Uh, we already talked about that series. 3 0 to LAG. We already talked about the series. So 2 and 0. And then the Toronto match was kind of a bonus match. Um, and they kind of lost versus Toronto the way they've lost them all season. This did not look on a position in the response where they were going to make the right decisions collectively and do stuff together to try and beat Toronto with teamwork. And although they did steal an SND off of them on Karachi, it was never really in doubt that Toronto was going to win that series. But either way, if you're Miami two and two and your only two losses are to Optic in Toronto, I think you probably take that at this point in the season. 500 was going to get you in. And like I said, with the scheduling uh, over the next two weeks, I kind of see them taking at least one and getting into winner's bracket and then just kind of figuring it out from there um, going into champs. I think the biggest Thing with them is just consistency of teamwork and it's not even like a map thing or a mode thing it's just like they just kind of just ego challenge single chow a little bit too often and i don't think they're as skilled as some of the top teams to get away with that so they just look dumb when they're trying to solo break uh p5 karachi so anyway i, I just don't know i think miami's kind of settling in this sort of like seventh eighth best team spot i just don't see them being in the tier above um and yeah that's how i feel so it's just kind of a question then of like do i want to move like any of these teams up like do i want to after one weekend, like put Vegas like in the sixth spot. I was thinking before this video, like I might do it because Vegas is kind of, you know, in the last five series, they've won three of them. 
I'm going to the week before uh, the major, but they've also lost to Miami at land. I, I don't know. I think for now, I'm just going to leave Seattle in this fifth spot. And then ideally one of these teams is going to figure the format and kind of move up. But let's talk about um, the surge uh, real quick. They only had one, uh, they had two matches rather um, this week. One was against New York where they took the first map on a Vista hard point, but then proceeded to not really particularly well the next two maps. They gave it a decent go on a real hard point, but uh, some really good quality plays from New York and really honestly, some poor rotations out of Seattle kind of doomed them in trying to force a game five in that series. And then they kind of decimated Boston. So this is kind of the Seattle, I kind of expect they're sort of clear in the fifth spot, going to make champs really in a position where they're already in winners because they're three and one. They have Vegas, Miami, and LAG coming up. So Seattle actually get to like six wins this stage and sneak a very good seed um, going into uh, major four, which uh, again, for them to try and lock down this fifth spot, which they have a very decent uh, lead on the bottom teams, but only 10 on Miami is big because I think Seattle versus New York winners round one of champs is a very interesting tie and with a lot of time to prep. I think Seattle could make that one very interesting. And I actually would trust them to maybe get it done in the game five. Although my key thing to watch with Seattle is that with this sort of new squad, they are virtually, for all things considered, a 500 SD team. They went from being like a very good SD team with Ender, obviously playing a lot of terminal search, but they were still good on a lot of other maps like a high rise. They have kind of settled to like a, a eh, SD team and, and they might kind of doom them in trying to get upsets um, down the line. You know, let's talk about the New York subliners. A lot of people call me a New York subliners hater. I just think I'm a realist about this team. Like, I just don't know what we're waiting for at this point with the squad. Could it just click on a weekend and they get hot and every decision they make is, is right? Yes, it is hot and they win an event. Absolutely. They have the talent to do it. But I just don't know as we are now eight months into the season. And we've seen this New York team just settle into just being the fourth best team. They just can't consistently beat the other top three teams. And they get upset a lot by bottom eight teams, more so relative to what Optic Phase and Toronto have done in all of the past splits really combined. So yes, they have a very good series against Seattle we just talked about, but they also got slammed by Vegas. And I just think you sit here and I see Dante complain about online Call of Duty and it just screams to me that this team is just like not locked in and where their position is. They're confident in their abilities, but confident at what? Just getting a participation medal at every event they go to. I, I just don't... I just don't know how much else we need to see from this New York team to know that they're just not an elite respawn team and that the S and D can be iffy and has been at times not that great this stage. Yes, they are a very good invasion search team. I will give you that. But Rio had problems this seed stage of four. Six star problems this stage. Karachi problems this stage. And again, small sample sizes on those maps, but nobody wants to play them on high rise, which is one of their better maps. And so they're gonna have to beat people on the other maps. And since last stage, you're now 0-2 on Karachi. 0 oh, and 2 on Rio, and they're 1 and 3 on 6 star. I just, there's a lot of issues this team. That's just S and D. I mean, I could sit here for 10 minutes and talk about the other game modes, but this New York team is the fourth best team. Not going to take arguments on it. It just is what it is. They have uh, now 2 and 2. They have Rocker and Thieves, which I assume, I assume they're going to beat. They beat Thieves at the last major. Uh, they beat Rocker online last split, obviously, with a little bit of, um, you know, Kind of a different situation going on there so i think they're going to get to four wins but i just have no confidence in them uh beating optic i don't know i, I, I thought maybe that phase series show would sort of a little bit more i think kismet's played pretty solid since then and then everybody on the team laid an egg against vegas so i just i don't know what to think with these guys man and, and they're really solid in that fourth spot. all right next up we have the toronto ultra well, only one match for them this week and it was the miami match that we have discussed prior it's been a very solid stage for Toronto since they uh, lost to Seattle um, in their first match of this qualifier. Um, they've only dropped one map in those two series. Um, so if you are a Toronto fan, you need to like the way that they have looked in hard point really across all three matches. They have not lost one. The control has looked really good. They played high rise three times. The S and D, um, they're continuing a hot form on Rio and really giving people something to think about in vetoes, but they still have struggled in the one time they did try to play high rise. So I don't think we've learned a lot of new stuff really about Toronto because all that kind of matches of what they were doing really in stage three. And it's more so about them kind of continuing to round out some of the rougher edges in the map pool and getting in a position where they play phase and optic later on the split online. Can they really stack up to those teams um, and they're kind of deeper set. So Toronto will make winner's bracket. They got Thieves and Rocker coming up next week. I expect them to win both. 
be four and one. Then going into really the, the meet that last week where they play those uh, two teams also in this tier, and we kind of see how Toronto backs up against them. And I would say for the standings kind of thing, I, I think the way it's shaping up right now is that uh, FaZe is on 455 points, Object Tex is on 415, and Toronto is on 410. Now the team in first at the event gets 100 points, and the team in second gets 75. I think realistically, FaZe probably have a very good chance based on their current lead and their schedule that they're going to maintain a pretty decent lead going into the major and unless uh phase kind of really 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 struggle you know i think even if they get third it's only a 40 point difference from first like i think they probably based on the head dead are still going to get that first seed but so optic and toronto are really duking for that second seed which it doesn't really matter because they're both going to play each other in winners like if they get second third seed they're going to play each other in winners round two anyway but i think you just kind of want to have that veto advantage and maybe you know phase fault or need a chance at the first seed and get new york a winners round uh, two instead, and you get kind of probably a weaker eight seed opponent. So, uh, a lot to play for. All right, Atlanta phase. Um, not really much to write home about um, this week. We talked about the Carolina series. And I didn't think that phase uh, in either sub bases they really played this week and have looked that great. And the evasion search is still extremely iffy for them, but they did fight back in that series, so that is respectable. Even though I don't think they should have gone to Game Five of Carolina, but that's how twice it's happened this season. And the LIG series is back to business, like they crushed the guys outside of Map One. So I think if you're a Phase fan, nothing really you learn this weekend with their team. I mean, they are getting their their six star reps, which I think is, or sorry, rather their sub base reps, is understandable because what are you going to learn playing your better map? LIG, I don't know. It's just about continuing to. Um, I think if your phase really continue being a dominant control team, that really hasn't changed. Kind of figuring out, you know, what hard points you want to play against some of these top teams. Not everybody's settling in on six star and Vista. And then really improving in search, which they won four or five so far online, which is really good as, as opposed to last stage where they end up in a sub 500 situation where they went six and seven S and D. So to keep that trend, I think they're going to be in a really good spot come Sunday at Major 4. They have Boston and Thieves coming up next week. I'll actually be in Atlanta uh, streaming from the facility uh, starting on Wednesday. So we'll probably get some content from the guys kind of talking about those series that week. And then you got Toronto and Miami to kind of round uh, things out uh, in the second week. So I expect FaZe to probably be on six, maybe seven wins at this stage. They're going to get a top seed. And again, uh, I think if they do that, they're probably going to have number one seed locked down for champs uh, starting in about a month or so from now. Last part of the video is Optic Texas. I, this is a really interesting conversation. So I laid the egg uh, against Vegas last week. And I would have thought with the week going into a weaker Minnesota Rocker opponent that I thought they would really handle these guys. And at worst, it's kind of, again, the classic 3-1 that keeps happening against Minnesota or 3-0. And instead, I felt like after... I don't know what happened. It happened some point in the middle of map one. I, I felt like some people on the Optic team felt like they just were going to play with full disrespect. Um, against Minnesota Rocker, which I understand that still means you have to do the basics on invasion control. You still got to go left and respect a street. You got to pick up all the lanes on a hard point Vista. They didn't do that and got slammed on that map. And the SD Karachi, I think people, you know, Optic just really haven't switched up all that much on that map. Um, and they are now in real trouble um, because the SD Karachi trend now has been extremely, extremely poor. They've gone from being a dominant team on the map losing the last three times that they have played it so i think if you are an optic fan you got to feel that the team has still got a very good way to get back in series because they're still a good control team but when they are not engaged when they're not locked in you see the worst tendencies and the team kind of come out and i feel like they just got to fight the sort of online complacency and really try and win these series or play cleaner going into the major and champs they didn't play that clean going online in the major three i know and won that but i feel like threading the needle on that um, happening is not always going to lead to consistently winning, especially when I think Toronto and FaZe are a little bit more locked in right now. So for Optic, I think they have very nice schedule the next two weeks because it's going to, I think, require them to lock in. Uh, they have Carolina and New York. So Carolina is super desperate and New York obviously also really trying to get some kind of momentum as well. And they have Boston, which should be a pushover series and then Toronto you definitely don't want to lose because right now optics one and two you have a bad week uh next week let's say you go zero and two again suddenly like you got to actually win the final two matches to make winners bracket. and when you don't want if you're optic what you don't want is to only win like you know three goes three and four and get a really rough seed going into major four and then maybe you're playing phase with toronto winners round one and then you 
loser bracket run. You just don't want any of that, that issue that's going to set you up for a poor major four, a real tough major four. Like they need to lock in, win three or four and get the right momentum going into major four. Cause right now, uh, the last two weekends have not been particularly good. For the team. I would say they're playing like B minus at best uh, Call of Duty right now. So yeah, sort of a longer tier list video than I normally do, but I think I kind of had a lot to say about these teams. The way it's settling is obviously the top three of the top three, even though I just, you know, kind of give a whole thing about optics style right now. I think there's still got enough talent that they're going to be top four and probably not lose to New York. New York's in that fourth spot. Seattle's in that fifth spot. There's, there's a sixth best team somewhere amongst his bottom six. I just don't know who it is yet. And then Boston, well, we'll, we'll see a fudging later in a few weeks. So that's uh, how the tier list is setting up right now. All right, let me know what's in the comments what you guys think of the video. Like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more. And as always, guys, we'll see you on the next one.